Hello and welcome to a Smurd P video and today we're looking at the new series X-Men from the Ashes issue one and pretty much this is a uh, cover A if I've got my thing correct I'm no longer correcting any other covers I'm keeping it simple for this uh, era because basically I can't be bothered um, <laughs> anyway this new team comprises of Cyclops, Beast, Magneto, Psylocke, Kid, Omega, Temper, Magic, Juggernaut, Rider is Jed McKay, Penciler is Ryan Stegman, Inca J.P. Mayer, Colorist Marty Gracia. I hope I said all those names correctly and I apologize if I've said anything correct. So, Krakoa is over with. Now the X-Men are trying to shatter, uh, sorry, trying to find their way in the world, so to speak. And we begin with Canada, where the X-Men have taken over residence in this factory. I thought it was going to be in uh, the uh, Weapon X place where Cyclops was during the revolution, but, um, you know, I guess I was wrong. So Beast uh, greets the police lady who is uh, Chief Robbins, who is startled by his appearance. And this Beast is not the Beast in the Krakoa era, not the beast that led X-Force and did lots of atrocities. This is a, a clone of that beast who uh, had who simpler times around the time that he was probably with the Avengers, etc. So the X-Men team are out in the field and they are being attacked. And, you know, it's, it's actually great that Quinton is with Cyclops for a change instead of Wolverine, where he's sort of been with him for a, a very long time. And they are there to save some mutants via baptized species. Pretty much everybody that I've just said on. I, I feel like I'm going to love this little relationship between Juggernaut and Magic, who are playing rock, scissors and paper to see who is going first. They are the assault team, they go flying in, but is it really a team if it's two of them, as Magic points out? Quinton, who is meant to be an Omega mutant, is under pressure from Cyclops to work his magic. Uh, Temper is uh, also part of the mix and trying to get them into the thing, and then they just head out. Let's get their people. So meanwhile, back at the factory, uh, Chief Robbins is introduced to Glob, startled once again. And uh, Glob is uh, growing vegetables, peppers, salad, all that good stuff, which is probably very difficult considering they are in Alaska. And we, the townspeople used to run this factory for orchards where they used to build, well, sentinels. So you can imagine... Uh, a lot of them have lost jobs now. They are now in a different place and probably quite upset at the whole process and maybe even want the uh, factory to reopen. Wolverine has been captured, and uh, but all that means is that the X-Men are breaking in. Quinton asks a question around why have they got eggs on there? And uh, Jogan, uh, basically, he's missed listen to a briefing as normal and uh, it's like being back at the wolverine school so this is a, a remnant of orchards called the fourth school and basically it is uh, the u-men uh, sublines little john sublines little creatures who believed that a fourth species was going to emerge which would be a mix of human ai and mutants so basically these people are taking mutants, taking parts of them, they're taking parts of AI as well as, you know, and themselves being human and creating this fourth species. That is the uh, the idea here. So back at uh, the thing they're talking about where they are, and I've sort of summed this up already. Basically, Beast sort of explains that they've lost Krakoa, They've uh, they're a bit unwanted and they're just trying to find their place in the world. So they've ended up in the backwaters of the world. So Alaska, I'm not sure whether Alaska is a black area of the world. I've never been there. I have no idea. Um, but that's where they've sort of landed up. And um, also, 
you know, he, he, he refers to the Comp Care pot that actually he was an on cracker. Or he didn't get to experience that because he only came out of his shell towards the end of that. Uh, Psylocke is there to obviously help Wolverine. And we get this little moment between Quinton and uh, Idol about uh, Cyclops and the X-Men failing once again. Um, because if, if you look at the patterns over... You know, bear in mind, we got 60 years of uh, uh, material to read. The X-Men fail. They rebuild. They fail. They rebuild. Continuous patterns. Cyclops failed. Rebuild. Professor X failed. Rebuild. Constantly. So that's, you know, what they're sort of discussing, as well as the fact that Idol was chucked in the pit and left to her own devices-wise. Uh, Quinton, part of X-Force, was doing good knows what war crimes across the world. So, uh, Wolverine is, is there, they're all saved, and we start getting this conversation about uh, the mutant gene developing during puberty and coming out of it. However, in this scenario, they've activated in four adults. There are no young people here. Beast introduces Zorn, so uh, the Zorn one always throws me off. I know we've had... Uh, different incarnations of Zorn and the original Zorn tried to be Magneto. It was really weird because I think they didn't actually want Magneto dead and just to make it really confusing. So we've got a healer on our, our mitts and uh, then Max comes in and does what Max does. Uh, he scares the crap out of Robbins and uh, which is what he intended to do. And then he just reminds everybody of because of what he did back in those earlier days, you know, Gene was able to be strong enough to wield cosmic power. Warren had the strength to survive Apocalypse. Robert, Robert, uh, Robert became, uh, discovered his power to become Omega Potential, you know, and Scott became the leader that he had to. So, you know, which is great. And he's just, he just does this little fear bit to remind him. And do you remember at the beginning of the Krakoa era, he did the same way. He said, we are your gods now. So very similar. He's, you know, he's saying, these are my people. We will be allowed to thrive here. Uh, X mentions, so lots of other X books going on. There's quite a few, actually. Uh, more than I was actually expecting. Uh, the new uh, Orchis subline whatever you want to call them mutants start changing the game and start attacking the x-men and even though they get a, a start of an uplift they are too new to their powers to be of any uh what's it any yeah uh, oh my goodness my words have gone any sort of um competitor that's the wrong word completely competition no that's the wrong word they're not able to stand up to the X-Men because they're so new to their powers that they end up not having the trained abilities to be able to fight that. And I am sorry, that was a complete disaster. So they eventually end up taking it. There are bombs on the way, but they are getting out of there on uh, the Marauder. That's what they've called their ship, the Marauder. So they've almost become like the Marauders of Krakoa, perhaps going to save mutants. Um, maybe that's how this book's going to plan out. I'm not so sure. Uh, this is the part where Logan decides to depart. He can't do this anymore. And it was sort of there in the latter uh, issues of uh, Wolverine series by Benjamin Percy. He was, or was it X for one of those, where he was uh, saying that, you know, this always happens to him in his life. He's lived a long life. So he builds something up, it gets destroyed, and he has to start again. He can't do it this time. Uh, he goes off, and I think he's in one of the other books anyway. So I'm sure we'll be seeing Wolverine uh, in the next couple of months anyway. Uh, so Wolverine's out. Then they discuss how did uh, six adult Orchis angel, angels agents become uh, X-Gene activated at the same time? And then we just sort of get the ending with uh, Beast and Cyclops talking about Robin's coming up and what happened and that he tried to get it to be at ease and relax. Whereas Max came in and did the whole scary bits, 
which is cool. I love Magneto being called Professor M as well, which is cool. And um, they're not, Beast is ready to take down, uh, start stripping things from parts. However, Cyclops reminds him. So it, earlier in the story, which I haven't alluded to, the, the townspeople are very grateful for the X-Men for doing something. We've not known what that is until the end where this monstrosity was clearly going to destroy this town. So Cyclops just wants them to not forget what they owe owe them by allowing this thing to keep. There's a QR code there, which is quite interesting. I've never ever clicked on anything like that, so I might click on that in a minute. And then we just got uh, Jed McKay just giving an overview. Um, I've read many of uh, Jed's books over the years, and I kind of, um, I usually kind of like his stuff. So um, I don't know if he's read, uh, done an X book before. I'm not sure. I've seen, I mean, I've read plenty of Spider-Man and Black Cat. But it will be interesting to see what uh, develops in his X-Men. So, yeah, I think it's a good start. I think it's a good cast. I like this cast. I do hope that um, as much I love Cyclops, I like Magic, I like Psylocke, I like the big characters. I do hope uh, Idol and uh, Juggernaut and Omega uh, get some some playtime in there as well. Also, Beast, this Beast trying to perhaps come to terms with what the other beast did in his name I, I you know i think that's quite i think it'd be good if they explored that but i guess we'll see you know i don't know how much handover there is in these things so definitely will be interesting to see over the coming months so anyway i hope you like my video um i hope those who watch my video are happy that i'm still doing x-men books uh if you haven't subscribed please subscribe support my channel really appreciate it make sure you look after yourself very important these days and as always embrace geekiness take care Goodbye.